Ah, yes, and today we're going to continue our look, so to speak, at the ever-expanding Legacy Menasaur. And I said for a long time, I'm not in for it, not in for it. Well, as it would turn out, I said I would check out Dragstrip because it was only fair to give it a chance. I managed to get um, Menasaur, who we have not, or Motormaster, who we have not looked at yet here on the channel, for less than the U.S. price. And... My wife picked up this guy. It is Wild Rider, and he was a little bit less than retail, regular retail price as well. You know, maybe I'm being sent a message. I don't know. Maybe this is decent. Maybe it's good. I have wondered how effective it is using my Combiner Wars legs, because I already have Breakneck, right? Or I think it was Breakneck, I think is what the Combiner Wars version of Wild, Wild Rider was called. And I was quite happy with that. I didn't know if I would like this guy more or the same or less. What shocks me the most is that this guy is, his engineering is shockingly similar to his Combiner Wars counterpart. I'll talk about that when we jump into everything to do with this guy in the latest Got By True review. <laughs> Hey one, hey all, welcome back to the channel. I'm your host, your most humble of hosts, Dennis Moulton, a.k.a. Gotbot. As always, man, please like, comment, share, of course, subscribe while you're at it, light up my baby. Hit that notification bell. It helps me out a ton. It lets you know when content of all sorts goes up here on the channel. Check out Machinery of Man, the Everything Factor, all the groups that I'm either a mod or an admin for, as well as all of my social media links. All of that in the description down below. Also in the description down below, and if you're in a position to help the channel to grow, you can use the donate link. You can check us out on Patreon. You can see what we have to offer to you through spring. Or, of course, you can hit the join button right here on YouTube and become a channel member. Um, well, you know what? While you're at it, hit the subscribe button. Stick around and have some fun with us here on the channel. You know? You might as well, right? Uh, I don't know if I said that earlier. That's why I stuck it in there. Uh, but, yeah. So, it's been a wild ride, pardon the pun, to kind of getting to Wild Rider. Um, I really, I was so torn. I really, really was. And when I first got him out of package, I was totally prepared to say that I thought he was the weakest of the wave. He was bonkers tight at every single joint, like uncomfortably tight at every single joint. Has that eased up? Has it gotten better? Um... I guess we're about to find out, because you know what we're going to do? We're going to head over to the table and take a closer look at this guy. Pay no mind to how hodgepodge in the package we have Wild Rider. I had him out. I have put him in here just because it was easier for storage for moving him around before the review. So he's kind of in there by happenstance. Uh, this is his packaging. Uh, here he is in his vehicle mode. Cool. Over here, a close-up of the robot mode and his face, as we have become accustomed with Legacy. Over here, our Decepticon artwork that we typically have for Legacy. And then, and then on the back, you guessed it, here we have Wild Rider in his alt modes. Here we have instructions. They're pretty good. Uh, again, I like that Legacy is bigger, clearer, brighter. Uh, I think that they kind of hit a sweet spot when it comes to instructions, as far as instructions go. Our boy comes with this blaster. It's nicely painted with, um, it's silver, but there's a little tinge hint of something on it, much like with Tarantulas's saw blade. It's not quite silver. It's like a silver with a, I don't know, with a touch of lavender. And it's times too. Pretty sure this is the exact same accessory that came with drag strip. So I don't know. It's fine, I guess. And here we have a comparison. It's the only comparison that really sort of matters. It's the Combiner Wars. I think it was called Breakneck, but we know it's Wild Rider. Next to the Legacy Wild Rider. If we were talking in reference to the uh, Unite Warriors version as well, uh, the only things there worth pointing out is that the toes of that Wild Rider are silver, the thighs are uh, gray, and the chest where we have purple here, uh, we have a Decepticon logo in the center, and on the two sides that would be blue, and the blue is more accurate. Otherwise, uh, the Unite Warriors version pretty much looks like the Combiner Wars version. And I would say that the Unite Warriors version is pretty darn accurate to the original animation. Obviously, the most stylized version of Wild Rider is this guy, but I still like it. And I will point this out. Heck of a back backpack, and while this guy has a backpack, I, I don't 
feel like it's as egregious as the other one, even though it seems to pretty much stick off, you know, about the same, but I guess where it's more compacted together or less pieces, it doesn't feel as big. I don't know if that makes any sense. Not that it particularly matters. We're going to turn this guy back around. Let's get into the scores for uh, his look, basically. Um, so starting at the feet, working our way up on the kind of front of the robot body. Uh, you know, gray feet and shins and um, thighs, all that's right. We, the tires on the side, that's right. We do have silver painted here on the... Uh, on the tire. Oddly, it's not the same as up here. That's kind of weird, but whatever. These tires should really be up on the shoulders, but they're not. They're back here. That's that's fine, I guess. Um, the arms have red on the upper arm and the lower arm, and like the elbow is gray, and I was like, that looks strange, but you know what? That's accurate. The gray hands, that's accurate. I love the shimmery metallic red uh, stripe on the side and going down the leg. Certainly on the leg is accurate, not so much going down the side. And to be fair, uh, Wild Rider does have a weird backpack. Maybe not quite that big. Uh, uh, the pelvis and the tummy being gray is accurate. The silver on the chest with the two blue, that's accurate. And he doesn't seem to have his Decepticon logo up on the top part of his chest, but you know what? That's kind of a small price to pay. Most of it is there. I'm going to say that the guy is a solid 9.75 I, I, in terms of looks. I Maybe 9.5 because the backpack is a little more egregious than it is in the animation. And I guess he's missing that silver. We'll say 9.5. Um, of course, in his hand, he could hold this and like dual wield it as one blaster or he, he could hold one in each hand if you're so inclined. In terms of the articulation, the guy has a head that goes left and right, uh, up and uh, I guess a little down, but you're kind of undoing, like you're really, un to look down you're undoing the, the chest um, from, you know, for transformation basically, right? Uh, the arms, they can go all the way around Bicep swivel, elbow to 90 degrees. Um, again, no wrist swivel. I I don't know if any character in, that I've looked at so far in this wave has a wrist swivel. I'm a bit concerned starting to see that go for the prices we pay. Uh, waist. We have a, you know, free-flowing waist. We have... Hips way out to the side, I love it. We have hips all the way back, I think that's fantastic. And all the way forward, so very free flowing. Very tight tolerances on my copy. Like, very tight tolerances. Uh, thigh swivel, knee to 90 degrees. Nothing, uh, nothing back on the foot, but certainly forward on the foot. And we do have an ankle tilt that's pretty darn deep. So, um, yeah, I, I, wrist swivel. I would like a wrist swivel since we've become accustomed to it. I don't like seeing points of articulation being taken away. And I don't think for what we as paying customers pay, any of the articulation we've become accustomed to should be taken away. I think that's unacceptable. Nevertheless, that's only one point of articulation. It's one gripe, we'll say. Nine and a half, maybe even 9.75. I'm probably 9.75 because I thought that the backpack was going to get in the way a lot more than it does. And honestly, with the backpack, there's other things you can do with it. Like, you can have it higher up on his back. You can bring these pieces up on the side. If you have it up higher on his back, yes, it's more over the top of his head and looks a bit silly. But you can also then kind of close up this windshield. And, you know, it's your, it's your call. I will also say this. There's a lot of red translucent plastic on this guy, like a lot of it. So something worth noting if that's a big issue for you. It's not for me, but I would understand if it is for some people. The transformation is uh, involved. So, you know, right now we have, say, 8.75 for the, no, what was it? A 9.5. Uh, maybe even a 9.75 for the articulation and for the, the look of the guy, we're saying 
I don't remember exactly what I said, 8.75, maybe a 9, maybe I said a 9. Let's say a 9 and a 9.75. Let's say, heading into transformation, that overall, considering the look of the guy and the articulation, he's getting a 9.5. Pretty darn good. Transformation. Okay, so let's kind of start to get into it, because why not? I like to bring these pieces up, and we'll kind of just get that on. You can even kind of bring it up here if you are so inclined. Straighten up the arms. Mine are so tight. Put in the wrists. Straighten up the arm. I put in the hands. The hands are ratcheted oddly. We bring the chest forward. We bring the head in and we close up the chest again. Um, we ooh, see if I can remember all this. We yeah, we gotta we gotta bring those feet down. Um, and then we open the we open the legs, but is it from the back or the front? No, it's from the front. That's what I thought. I thought it was from the front. And we turn at the waist. Kind of bring those arms in for now. You're gonna want them to be as straight as you can possibly have the waist. Um, bring the legs. You know what? Let's actually fold this up first because the knees and everything are so weirdly tight. There we go. So we got that one up. And again, this knee being kind of oddly tight. It's sort of kind of ratcheted, maybe? But it's hard to say because it doesn't really feel like it's ratcheted. And then we, there you go. Put the legs together. We close the uh, legs down under here. And we make sure we have the arms in here on the side. Getting everything fit together is, I don't want to say a chore. It's not a chore, but it is challenging, I suppose. So we got all of that together. If you want to put them in his leg mode, I'm going to actually get that out. I mean, if you want to put them in his leg mode, that's basically it right there. Um, you know, it's probably, probably not perfect, but that's basically it. And then you kind of shove them on, and this is over the heel, we'll call it, the heel stabilizer of Menasaur, and this piece is down. Um, I don't know if these are supposed to lock some way. I don't see anything that indicates that, so this is basically the leg mode, which, okay, I guess. I mean, it's no worse than the leg mode from the Combiner Wars, because all the Combiner Wars does is turn up this way and put a foot in the bottom, and then all of this falls down over the front, so it's basically the the same kind of transformation where it's mostly the car with the front bent bent down then to go to the car mode here we kind of bring that down and solidify it in we bring that down and solidify it on if you're anything like me and you want to store the the blasters i mean obviously your best bet is to use that peg hole there and Use that peg hole there, and boom, in the end, here we have Wall Rider in his vehicle mode. Here we have both lads in their vehicle modes, and undoubtedly, the Legacy one is more reminiscent of the actual uh, vehicle. We probably could have a couple of, like, gray line highlights coming here to kind of break up the, the windows a little bit, because he did have that in the animation, but... Honestly, like, it's hard to argue with the accuracy of this. Shockingly, shockingly similar transformations between here and here. Uh, very comparable. Both molds, honestly, very comparable. The, you know, the waist turns on both, the legs fold up on both, uh, the arms go in on the side on both, and the uh, front end comes up over the front on both. If you know this transformation, then pretty much do the same thing here. It's, it's very, very, very similar. I'm gonna say that we were coming into the transformation with a nine and a half. I think that this is quite good. It's funny, I was prepared to say that I thought that this mold was the weakest of the wave because my tolerances were so stupidly tight, but they seem to have kind of worked their way to a comfort level uh, in fiddling with him. So now I kind of say, you know what? It's, it's, it's smoother than I thought. I'm gonna say that it's a, it's a nine. It's a nine, maybe even a nine and a half. Overall, I think the guys say a nine and a half. I have, was very curious if this guy could work with Menasaur. Um, I wasn't sure if I was going to get this guy, but when your wife picks it, picks it up for you, when it's, I think it was about $3, maybe $2 cheaper than regular retail, 
um, you know, okay, why not take take a chance on it? It's a little cheaper than what regular retail is. And I mean, when your wife picks it up, you you don't say no, right? Uh, so yeah, uh, I, I, I very surprised. Better than I thought. Happy surprise. If you are thinking, hey, maybe I can use my Combiner Wars limbs with the new torso, there's an argument for doing that. Undoubtedly a solid, solid argument for doing that. We'll talk about that more later. If you're totally in on the new uh, Legacy Menasaur and him putting basically clothes on his body, because that's kind of the way it is more so than combining in reality, the drag strip is it's okay. It's nothing super special, but it's okay. But I, I think that the Wild Rider is better than the drag strip. Take that for what you will. The only other thing worth noting here before we go, we already know this guy's great, is even with his feet kind of underneath, yes, the guy rolls just fine. No problemo. Success in, I'll say, all modes. Hard to argue with it. And here we are, and here he is. And you know, I got, like I have to be real honest here, and say like I both like this guy and don't like this guy all at once. It's really weird. So, like I don't like the backpack. I find that wildly egregious. Yet when we compare him to the Combiner Wars, the Combiner Wars has a similarly sized backpack. It just doesn't seem as all splayed out wildly like this. Um, <laughs> uh, the joints have gotten much better much much better and I really do like them now. I'm baffled by the knees. The knees are like they're like a soft ratchet but when you have this guy in vehicle mode and you're trying to take him back to robot mode trying to straighten out the leg is on my copy anyway frightening because it's so crazy tight. I, I don't I guess that's deliberate uh, you know for holding together the solidity of the vehicle mode, maybe for combined mode or whatever. I guess it's like a necessary thing. I, I'd rather the joints be too tight than not tight enough, I'll say that. The look of the guy is much more accurate than the Combiner Wars. It is even more accurate than the Unite Warriors, though the Unite Warriors is very good. The method of going to limb mode is pretty much the same except with this guy you have the front of the car down as the bottom of the foot rather than the front of the car being bent down as part of the knee otherwise it's pretty much the same sort of transformation right when we go to vehicle mode we do the exact same moves we take this backpack off we bring it up over the head with the combiner wars one you don't hide the head away it's just a cavity that comes up over the head with this guy you hide the head away the windshield again comes up and clips in the exact same way. We turn at the waist the exact same way. The legs flip up the exact same way. It's just this time we have dedicated feet. The dedicated feet are under the car. It, with the Combiner Wars we don't have dedicated feet. It's just part of the fold up process. So we do have like one extra part there for the feet I suppose. Um, and the arms still go in on the sides. And even the hands flip in to the arms. If you know Combiner Wars, you know this. It's really up to you. Do you prefer the look of the Combiner Wars or do you prefer the look of this? Go with the one that looks the best. If you're thinking that this is overpriced, I can't really argue it with you. Um, if you're happy with the Combiner Wars, great. If you didn't ever get it because you got stuck with um, uh, Off-Road, who is a great version even though he's a truck, but if you were stuck with Off-Road and you really want a Wild Rider, uh, it's a solid Wild Rider. It's just some of the joint tolerances are really tight and some of the places that there are ratchets seem odd and peculiar, at least to me. Maybe it doesn't to you. Excellent wild rider, just a little bit weird with the, the funky backpack and the, the maybe overly tight knees. That's about it. Let me know what you think about Legacy Wild, wild Rider. Absolute win for you or do you kind of nitpick a couple of little weird things like myself? He scored really well. I appreciate you guys coming by, giving me some of your extremely valuable time. I do know how important it is to you. If you're in a position to help the channel to grow, you can use the donate link, check us out on Patreon, see what we have to offer to you through spring, or of course hit the join button right here on YouTube and become a channel member. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. See, I made sure to say it this time. Especially don't forget that somehow, some way, each and every single solitary day, you right there, you do make a difference. And I look forward to the next time that you and I get together to have another visit either in the live streams on Thursday nights at the Stop Motion premieres or the old-fashioned way right here inside the videos.